Joining us right now is retired Navy Admiral and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, James Stavridis. Uh, uh, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us, Admiral. You bet. Good to see you, Maria. First, let me get your take on what you just heard from President Obama. I want to incorporate, of course, what's going on with Russia and how that complicates the relationships uh, among NATO countries. But first, what's your response to what the president just said in terms of uh, really getting our arms around ISIS and defeating this group? I think this is a necessary first step. It's certainly uh, necessary. Unfortunately, Marie, it's not sufficient. Uh, but it is a good step because what these special forces groups can do are three things. They'll gather intel on the ground. They're very effective at doing that. Number two, they'll direct strikes so our air campaign will be more effective. Number three, they can conduct raids and kill and capture leadership from the Islamic State. That will be effective, but it will not be enough to take this threat away from us. Why do you think the president has stayed so adamant in terms of getting more aggressive against ISIS? You know, he continues to say he, he's worried about casualties, but if you're at war, you're at war. Well, that would be my view, and I think that there is just a lot of Middle East fatigue in the White House. Mm. Uh, they have come out of wars, their view, in Iraq and Afghanistan, but unfortunately, neither of those stories are done. And so I think we're going to have to overcome our antipathy to groups on the ground. Now, that doesn't mean, Maria, that we need 150,000 troops like we had in Iraq and Afghanistan. What it means is probably 15 to 20,000 ground troops. I think we're going to build to that number. This is a, a step. It, it seems like ultimately he's got to go there and, and perhaps this is uh, leading toward that. Let me let me turn to the Russia story and, of course, the downing of that Russian aircraft by Turkey. Uh, a lot of people mentioning Article 5 of, of NATO. What's your take on how this uh, confuses the, the fight among NATO countries? You know, uh, Article 5, of course, is the treaty uh, line that says an attack on one nation will be regarded as an attack on all. Right. So the fact that uh, Turkey has downed the Russian aircraft puts Russia in a position of if they retaliate in a military way against Turkey, attack Turkey, that brings NATO into the fight in a serious way. That's why you're seeing Russia amping down the rhetoric, uh, trying very hard not to turn this into a military confrontation. So I don't think we'll go there. What is really interesting to look at, Maria, is whether or not NATO as an alliance will come into the fight against the Islamic State. I hope they do, because it brings terrific capability. It's uh, 28 nations, 52 percent of the world's GDP, 3 million troops under arms, 28,000 aircraft. We can use that in this fight against the Islamic State. So I think once the climate summit is over, you'll see the heads of state and government turn to the Islamic State and whether or not to bring NATO into this well, fight. I hope they do. It's interesting because isn't NATO in this fight now, particularly after Turkey down that Russian jet? NATO nations are in this fight. So you're seeing uh, Britain, France. Britain, in fact, today is having a debate in Parliament about whether to increase their strikes against Syria. You're seeing the United States. Turkey is somewhat in it. But the entire alliance, 28 nations, no, they're not 100 percent into this. So adding them as a collective bloc would be quite salutary against the Islamic State. But, you know, Admiral, I mean, a lot of people are saying, look, this is exactly what Putin wanted. He's trying to taunt NATO countries. He needs needs conflict. Let's face it. Oil prices have plummeted. His economy is based on oil. He's trading on conflict. He wants to look like the big tough guy in front of the Russian people uh, so that he looks like the protector, even though he's gotten them into this situation in the first place by invading Ukraine. So do you think this is basically all by design? I think Putin has a plan to keep Assad in power, and I think he will probably be effective at doing that. On the other hand, he's got to respond to the Russian people who are outraged at the shoot down of the jet. So he will use military power against the Islamic State. He will see this as two different problem sets. And of course, the uber challenge for uh, Vladimir Putin is his economy, which is going down four or five percent over the next couple of years. So he's got to get these sanctions lifted. So 
he has a very complex fact pattern he's got to deal with. I think he'll continue to back Assad, but he'll increase his force against the Islamic State and try to negotiate his way to sanctions relief. That's well, really his goal at this what, point. What should NATO be doing with regard to the economic muscle that ISIS has? I mean, when you think about it, you know, we all know that ISIS is the most powerful terrorist group we've, we've ever seen. They make much of their money by selling oil on the black market. And a lot of people believe Turkey is buying that black uh, that, that oil on the black market. So should NATO countries be getting involved stopping this, this caliphate, ISIS, from getting more powerful by being able to sell this oil? Absolutely. And there are two really critical ways to go after that. One is actually in the cyber world, to go after their finances, their ability to move money. Uh, they do a lot Why on a cash and carry basis. Why they, they are, yeah. but it is it, it. They are doing it, and it is an area in which nations are really are uh, uncomfortable a lot of times sharing information across the alliance because cyber is so sensitive. But I think the cyber push is the next big front against the Islamic State's finances. And the second thing is to go after the oil, Maria. The same way we go after interdicting the flow of heroin or cocaine. It's a good. It's a commodity. You can go after the source. You can go after the transit zone. You can go after. The the supply side in Turkey. So those are the two fronts you're going to see going after the finances and your right to put your finger on it as a key. All right. So you think NATO gets more involved after this climate summit in Paris and you think America gets more aggressive. Uh, how many how many thousands of troops on the ground do you expect President o Obama to ultimately succumb to? Well, I'll tell you how many troops I think we need, right, and good. I think that number is somewhere around 15,000. Right now, we've got about 3,500, maybe 4,000 with the recent additions. So we've got to add about 10,000 troops. Again, that's not, uh, that's not like trying to drink the whole sea. I mean, this is not 150,000 troops. So we need to get up to about 15,000. We need to push our allies to put about six or 7,000 alongside us, and then we can effectively energize the Peshmerga and the Iraqi security forces. Those are the ground troops we need. We continue the bombing campaign, the special ops. I think we'll see that ISIS is not 10 feet tall. And, and, and by the way, Admiral, uh, you know, we keep hearing from all of our guests that we've got the smallest Navy we've ever seen. Obviously, we've got the smallest army since World War II. You're a four-star Navy Admiral. I mean, what do you have to say about the state of our defenses today, the fact that we do have the smallest Navy ever? Well, the good news is it's a very capable Navy in terms of its combat abilities. But, Maria, uh, numbers have a quality all their own. In other words, no matter how good a ship is, it can't be in two places at the same time. So I'm very concerned about the size of our fleet, which is well below 300. We need at least 330 ships to really meet our global commitments. I don't see that uh, as part of the current narrative uh, coming out of the government. I think we need to increase it. The story is pretty much the same on the other side uh, in the Army and the Air Force. We live in a very dangerous world. We sure do. Serious times right now. Admiral, thanks so much for your insights. We so appreciate your time this morning. Thanks a lot, Maria. James Stavridis there joining us. We'll see you soon, sir. Don't forget